Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Hello everyone. I hope that you are doing great today. We will do a tutorial today in answering a law question. How do we answer law question? Okay. So uh, why do I create this video or these slides? I do this uh, because despite that I have explained to you in our first weeks, it seems that many of you didn't get it how to answer law question. Uh, that is why I created this video. So what do we do first? Okay, When you got the question, read the question carefully. All right? Don't just go through and see okay this important that's important no read carefully carefully every single words the fact is important you see and the application to the fact is very essential right from the answers given by you earlier it seems that uh, students right you will write out all the law that you consider to be raised in the question or you consider important without separating the issues okay you just dump everything there the fact the uh, the law the, the cases you know and then suddenly you come up with your conclusion right so here i would like you to read the fact carefully right understand what the question is telling you what the fact is telling you and from the facts okay you will take out all right the issues the facts will guide you to identify the relevant legal issues right so when you got this issue the problem right you got it from the fact okay so it might be one issue or it might be issues in the question you have to list down all the issues um, deal with one issue at a time so if there are three issues in the case deal with one by one all right so now after you determine the issues you have identified the issues okay write it down you need to go and see what are the relevant law okay which law involved in the issue and when i say law or in certain website they use rule okay when I say law, actually I'm referring to the sections in contract acts, for example, or companies act or SOGA, as well as the case law. Okay, I'm I'm, I am referring to both. Right. So you identify the issues and then you see that issue involve which law. And then after that, you have to apply the law in uh, in discussing the issues and support with case law you have to apply the law to the facts okay you have to apply the law that is the section as well as the case law to the facts you have to blend them together right discuss the facts right and also the law after that you have to come up with a conclusion right what is the conclusion for the issues right the conclusion must answer the question Okay. For example, you have the issue of whether there is contract between Ali and Abu, right? In conclusion, after you make a discussion, after you um, share the laws and make discussion, apply the facts and the law, blend it over, all right? All of it, okay? You have to com come to conclusion that uh, in this present case, basically, there is no contract between both 
uh, Ali and Abu. Okay, the contract uh, does not exist because uh, blah 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 as being discussed above. All right. So I expected you to read the fact carefully. And how do you answer? You have to identify the issues. After the issues, you go and see what is the relevant law. And then there must be application. And number four, conclusion. Right? There are four steps that you need to follow. This is how you arrange your answer. Only one issue. All right? They start with the... You can, if you can put brief fact using your own words, and then you start with issue, all right? The first point is the issue, and then the law, after that, application, and lastly, conclusion. However, if there are three issues, so use the same steps, right? Issue number one, all right? And then discuss the law for issue number one, application, conclusion, okay? Then you go for issue number two. Similar step, same step, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, and four. And uh, lastly, issue number three. Similar step, the four steps, okay? Issue, law, application, and conclusion. This is how you answer. I have uh, prepared few questions, but I will only discuss question number one in details with you. So... You will have the chance to write an essay from the answer given for the other questions. So let us see question number one now. Right, this is for the topic of consideration from contract law, okay, law of contract. Right, the question is, Kevin has transferred his 10 acres of land to his youngest daughter, Crystal, based on love and affection. Crystal did not give any consideration. Kenny, the eldest son, Ke uh, Kenny, the eldest son of Kevin, was not satisfied with his action, Kevin action, and intends to challenge the transfer of ownership registered in the land office. Can Kenny challenge the validity of that agreement? From the fact, okay, you know that a father transferred his land to a daughter for love and affection, and the daughter did not pay anything, right? So, when we talk about this, you know the issue now here is the consideration, is consideration of the transfer, consideration of the transaction. And in this case, the son is not happy with that, so he wants to challenge. Okay, now, from the fact, how do you determine the issue? How do you identify the issue? So now, how would you answer this question following the method shared earlier? Okay, identify the issue or issues. Right. So, you know, um, you can uh, identify the issue and use your own words in stating what the issue is. Okay, this is just an example. I'll give it to you. Right, issue. Whether a transfer of property without consideration but love and affection is valid. Because we want to check on that, right? We want to see whether it is valid. If it is valid, then Kevin cannot challenge. If not valid, then Kevin can challenge, right? So, uh, or you may also state like, whether the transfer of 10 acres of land to Crystal by Kevin can be challenged. Okay, both uh, both uh, issues, the way you put the issues, yeah, basically similar. It's just that the wording that you are using. So, in this case, if uh, some of you state the first one or some of you state the second one, I would accept both. And then when you state the issues, your application will actually uh, shows uh, in uh, application uh, shows how do you want to answer this issue? Okay, whether the transfer of ten acres of land to Crystal by Kevin can be challenged? Okay, or maybe you have another wording, but 
uh, almost similar. So now, the issue in this case is about the transfer and the consideration. And you want to know whether it can be challenged. Okay, how you word it is up to you, your creativity. And then I am not, um, I don't have, uh, I'm not fussy in your wording, but uh, you must get the point. When we talk about consideration, love and affection, is love and affection uh, valid? If you use love and affection, is it valid? If there is no payment made and only stating love and affection, is it valid? So what is the re most relevant law? What is the law? <laughs> so in this case, the most relevant is Section 26A of Contract Act. Okay, It's stated here that agreement without consideration is void unless it is expressed in writing and registered. Okay, so now you can see, all right, um, when the father actually transferred the property to the daughter, definitely it will be registered and also in writing. Okay, if you don't know, maybe you have no idea at all, but I will tell you that, yes, it must be in writing and everything must be in paper before you register at the land office. Okay. For the time being, enforced for registration of such document, and it is made on love and affection. Yeah, the question, the fact, clearly state that the father transferred the, to the daughter based on love and affection. Okay, even though it said that agreement without consideration is void. All right, you know that the daughter did not pay anything, so it's supposed to be void. But then. This section say, if it is based on love and affection in writing and also registered, then it is valid, okay? So, an agreement made on the ground of natural, natural love and affection would be binding. So, the action would be binding, okay? But now, it's not for you to blend the facts and the law yet. You just state the relevant law. So, now we are stating the law, Section 26A, uh, Companies Act, and also the requirement under the section. Number one. Express in writing, number two, registered, number three, the parties stand in near relation to each other. So in this case, you see that they have the relationship of father and daughter. Okay? And then see, is there any any case to support uh, uh, this uh, argument? Okay? We have one case, okay? In the case of Tan So Sim Deceit and Chan Lam Kyong and others and Tan So Kyo and others, 1951, right? Well, basically the court say that, all right, the validity of the um, action, okay, validity of the consideration, love and affection, based on near relation, whether their relationship is very near, very close, and then the uh, nearness, Dependent on the most of the group to which the parties belong and the circumstances of the particular family. Right. So you explain, it's not just the uh, decision of the court, you also explain the fact of the case. So in the Intan So Sim case, all right, a mother actually, not real mother, but she leave her property to adopted children. So in this case, the court say that they don't have uh, blood, blood ties. They, they don't, uh, their relationship is not considered near by the court in this case. That's why uh, the court did not allow in this case. Okay, so after you state the section, you state the case. And then, after you state both, you apply. So this is how I put it. In the present case, Kevin transferred 10 acres of land to his youngest daughter, Crystal, without any consideration, but based on love and affection between father and daughter. So basically, it is a consideration, okay? But uh, not nothing to do with money. So this is in pursuant to section 26, uh, subsection A. So this is the fact that I take back and put in the application. It is a basic principle of contract law that a contract is not valid without any consideration. However, there is an exception. Okay, In pursuant to Section 26A, an agreement that is expressed in writing or made in writing and is registered under the law based on love and affection between the parties is valid. Right. So now we are blending. 
right? We are blending the fact and also the law, right? Indirectly, Section 26A required that agreement made on the basis of love and affection must be expressed in writing and registered and the parties stand in a near relation. So, there are three requirements in which, okay, in which, in which we actually uh, state that there uh, the Kevin has fulfilled all three requirements. Okay, you can write it down. I don't write everything here. Okay, to know what is near relation, we can refer to the case again, right? So in our present case, in our present case, the relation is father and daughter. So, so there is no reason for court to reject. Basically, the transfer is valid. Okay, how do we know it is uh, registered? It is uh, in writing. Okay. In the fact, it already stated he has transferred, okay, which means that he has registered. He has registered. In the fact, the fact did not say given. Given means just give, whether it's registered or no, you don't know. But when we say it's already transferred, which means they have followed the law, okay. And in transferring, you have to put into writing. So, two requirements already fulfilled. And the third requirement, if we refer to the case, it stated that. Uh, adopted is not near relation, but in our present case, they have these blood ties. So, the father has actually uh, fulfilled all three requirements. There's no reason that Section 26A would not be applicable. So, Section 26A is applicable in this present case. Okay? Now, in the conclusion, right? Uh, in this present case, the action of Kevin is not against the Contract Act and is allowed under Section 26A. Therefore, the act of transferring the property to Crystal by Kevin cannot be challenged. Or whether, uh, or you may also say that, therefore, the transferred, right, the property to Crystal by Kevin, all right, is valid. Okay, no issue. All right, this is how you conclude. This is a very simple way. I hope you do understand what I'm trying to share with you. We have question number two, okay? Let us see the question. Right, we have Mr. Ajib who promised to give a gold ring with diamond. Basically, Mr. Ajib is uh, promised his wife to give a diamond ring on their anniversary. But Mr. Ajib later on failed to fulfill his promise. Now, his wife, Makma, intend to sue him for breach of contract. So now you have to advise Makma. So you see from the fact, husband promised wife to give something. Husband not fulfill the promise and the wife intend to sue. So now you have to tell the wife whether she can sue or she cannot sue. Okay? So how do you attempt this question? Look at the fact. The fact is very simple fact, right? Only one issue. Okay. Very simple and clear fact. Husband promised wife of a ring. Uh, it's not just a ring. It's a diamond ring on their anniversary. And the husband failed to fulfill the promise. And the wife want to sue. So you have to determine whether there's a contract. So, how do you attempt? First, look at the fact, identify the issue, and later determine the law. So, now, when you want to determine the law, when you look at it, right, this kind of, this kind of issue between husband and wife and contract, what do you remember? You have to know the intention of the husband, whether the husband has intention to create a legal relation when he promised the wife. But before we go further, we will determine the issue. We will identify the issue. So, what is the issue? You can wording, the way you word is not an, uh, a problem to me. I appreciate your creativity as long as you discuss within the law and you did not really go out from the scope. Okay. You can say whether there, there exists a contract between Mr. Ajit and Mama. Number two, you also can just go straight to uh, uh, intention to create legal relation. Whether Mr. Ajib has intention to create legal relation when he promised Makma to purchase a diamond ring.
Now, you will see the relevant law. Okay. You know the basic principle is that no contract can be legally enforced if the parties do not have intention to create legal relation and do not consent on it. Okay? If a party has do not consent, there will be no contract. So, when we talk about intention to create legal relation, we have presumption of intention. Do you remember the lecture? Okay? There are two parts for presumption. We will only discuss the relevant part that is something to do with social, family or other domestic agreement. Okay? When we talk about a domestic agreement, in this case, we are talking about agreement between husband and wife. The presumption for this intention to create legal relation between husband and wife, okay? The presumption is there will be no intention to create legal relation. When husband promised to buy something to the wife okay the presumption is the husband never in his heart consent or have intention to create something legal okay right. the presence or absence of intention you want to see whether the uh, intention is, uh, the, uh, exists or does not exist okay intention to create legal relation i mean whether it exists or not okay depends upon the interfere inference to be drawn by the court from the language used by the parties and the circumstances in which they use it so you have to explain this when you want to explain the relevant law you have to explain this right and then um you have to share the legal principle on agreement between husband and wife all right okay and also you have to discuss the case so the relevant case in this issue is balfour and balfour so discuss the case the fact of the case all right the issue in the case the judgment in the case the principle in the case and how do you apply the judgment and principle in the case to the relevant fact in this present case we are discussing now now is the time for you to apply to blend the facts and the law right so you have to apply the law in the present case all right the law that you discussed earlier okay and uh, the case that you discussed earlier in, earlier in this case maybe you can say basically mr ajib has no intention to create legal relation with mama when he promised her to buy blah 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 by applying the principle in the case of balfour and balfour where the court decided there was no intention okay and the action of the wife failed in this present case mr ajib is not bound to fulfill his promise so how do we conclude so, in conclusion, since there is no intention to create legal relation, there is no contract between the parties. Okay. If there is no contract, Makmah action against Mr. Ajib in court will fail. Okay. There will be no case. And you can word it as uh, how, how you want to word it. It's not an issue. But you still maintain in the context and within the scope. Okay. So, this is a second um sample of answer right i have two more questions that you have attempted earlier and i share with you the answer have a look at the answer question three okay question three you have attempted this question so this is the question all right this is the question Read the question and now take some time, pause this video, take some time to determine the issue, uh, the law, application and conclusion, right? So, the answer. There are three issues in this case. First involving Nana, second involving Jenny, and third involving John. So you have to put issue one, two, three. So issue one, after issue one, law one, after law, application, after that conclusion. Then go for issue two, law two, application two, conclusion two. Then issue three, law three, application three, and conclusion number three. 
What's the issue involving Nana? Is there any issue? Yes, you just want to determine whether the purchase entered by Nana is valid. Right? Then you go for law and the case law and then you make your own conclusion. You blend with the fact and then make your conclusion. Second, second issue, whether there's a contract between Jenny and John. Okay. Right. So look at the fact. Okay, look at the fact. Who makes the offer? You see that we learn that invitation to treat is display of goods and then the person who take the good go and want to pay, he she's the one who making the offer. Alright, in this case he she tried to negotiate. Okay, and this is the answer. Have you got the right answer? Have you discussed this way? And look at the principle in the cases. How do you actually blend the fact with the principle in the cases or the judgment in the case? Have you tried my way of discussing as I shared with you earlier? Okay, number third, number three, third issue, whether Mr. John committed an offense. Look at the fact clearly. What does the law say in the fact? Whoever is selling, not whoever has possession. But all this depends on the way you argue your answer. Okay? So this is the answer. Question number four. This question also has been attempted by you earlier. So let us look at the answer. First the question, then the answer. Try to answer again using the way the method I share with you in discussion, in this discussion. Try again. Maybe you did not follow the way or the method I have discussed. Try again. Pause this video and start again and see. Right. This is the answer. This is the answer. And check your answer. Is it similar answer? Did you really follow the methods? I have shared with you four question and answer. I hope that you uh, would understand better how do we answer law question. I wish to see this way of answer uh, in your answering uh, in your script or in your answer in future. Uh, if you do have any question, do not hesitate to contact me. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Bye.